Preface Those who read the newer translations of the scriptures are very often robbed of seeing what the original Hebrew text meant because of the modern tendency towards a free translation or to use dynamic equivalents as the modern translators call it. An example of this is the most important prophecy or prophetic promise by the Most High, that he shall turn back the captivity or captives of his people, Israel, in the end time. This fact is missed by those reading most of the newer translations which render this as restore the fortunes of Israel or Judah or his people. The prophetic, this prophetic promise is found in almost all the prophetic books as well as in Deuteronomy and Psalms. The most profound among these prophecies concerning the captivity of Israel are of course found in Acts 7 verses 42 through 43. Amos 5, verses 25 through 27, Micah 4, verse 10, and many places in the book of Jeremiah. Now what is meant by this captivity? First and most important of all is to realize that someone is not in captivity by choice, i.e., of his own free will. He is in captivity because someone or someone higher up has decided that he should be there. Nobody who is in captivity wishes to be there. Nevertheless, he is held captive. Secondly, let us see why Israel was sent into captivity. We read in Deuteronomy 28, verse 15, 41, 58, and 64, that Yahuwah said, He shall send them and their sons and daughters, their posterity, into captivity because of them not obeying the voice of Yahuwah, because of them not observing all the words of the teaching law. This captivity is often called scattering, which virtually is a synonym for it or parallels it. The well-known dispersion or diaspora or exile also has the same meaning. Then we read in Deuteronomy 30 verses 1 through 8 of the blessed promise that if his people turn back to him, he shall turn back their captivity and return them to their land, and they shall again obey the voice of Yahuwah and do all his commandments. This prophecy has not come to consummation yet. It has not been completely fulfilled yet. So they were sent into captivity. They went into exile. They were sent into dispersion. They were scattered among the Gentile nations because they did not obey the voice of Yahuwah. They did not observe to do all the words of the teaching law. Likewise, their return to the land is accompanied by or preceded by their return, turning back to Yahuwah and to obey his voice. This physical return to the land of Israel is not the important issue at stake. No. The all-important requisite and essential goal is that they turn back to him and obey his voice and observe to do all the words of the teaching. This captivity is generally known as the Babylonian captivity or Assyrio-Babylonian captivity, although an estimated 25% of those who are captives in Babylon return in two stages with Ezra, Zerubbabel, and Nehemiah in the year 538 BCE. And thereafter, the vast majority of the twelve tribes were still in exile, were still dispersed or scattered or still remain in captivity until recently when they started to come back to their land. This return started since the land of Israel became a reality again in the year of 1948 CE and since then there has been a steady and increasing return to Israel. However, the spiritual return a turning back is still feeble, almost lacking up to now. That spiritual turning back from Assyrio Babylonian captivity is still sorely wanting. The great end time outpouring of the Spirit, the great cleansing, the great reviving of the dead bones is yet to come. The vast majority of Israelites have still not accepted Yahushua, Yahushua as their Savior. Ever since their partial return from Babylonian captivity, we find that they are in apostasy. They adopted the names of the Babylonian months of which many are named after ba Babylonian deities, e.g. Tammuz. Many synagogues have the Babylonian zodiac on their floors. 
a few other relics of astral worship are still evident, details of which we do not want to elaborate on at present. The scriptural Levitical priesthood has also been superseded by laymen, the Sadducees and Pharisees, etc. But let us leave expounding all the details of their apostasy for a moment. At this stage, the born-again Gentile believer might ask, But what have I got to do with it? This is no concern of mine. This pertains to Israel after the flesh. Our reply to this is, 1. The passage in Romans 11, 17-24 clearly tells us that the believing, born-again Gentile believer is grafted in among the true Israelites. 2. In Ephesians 2 verse 19 and in Ephesians 3 verse 6, we read that the Gentile believer becomes a fellow citizen and a fellow heir with the faithful Israelites and becomes a member of the household of Elohim. 3. Romans 15 verses 27 tells us that the born-again Gentiles become partakers of Israel's spiritual matters. 4. Romans 2 verse 25 through 29 makes it very clear. He whose heart is circumcised. He who keeps the law, he is Yehudite, Jew. 5. Galatians 3 verse 29 confirms this. If you belong to Messiah, you are Abraham's seed. 6. As we shall prove later on in this book, the early church fathers as well as the rabbinical writings and all the reformers agree that Rome is the second Babylon, spiritual Babylon. As you continue reading this book, we shall prove to you that the astral Babylonian worship deeply infiltrated the Roman church and her daughters continued with this. 7. In Isaiah 14 verses 4 through 17, a special prophetic passage pertaining to the times we are living in. We read that the king of Babylon rules the nations and that he has made the world a wilderness. 8. In Daniel 2 Verse 28 through 45, another end time prophecy. We read that the king of Babylon is the head of this image which represents the Gentile nations of the world. All the nations of this world and all the inhabitants of this earth are part of this image of which the king of Babylon is the head and which will be crushed to pieces, pulverized when Yahushua, Yahushua comes. Nine. Jeremiah 50 and 51 clearly affirm this as well as the most astounding end time prophecies in Revelation chapters 13 to 19, clearly revealing to us how all the nations of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Jeremiah 51 verse 7, Revelation 17 verse 2 through 5, how she has corrupted the earth. Revelation 19 verse 2. 10. The only nation which is excluded from the end time plagues and ultimate destruction is true Israel. The new covenanted Israel, the renewed Israel. That is why we read the oft repeated call by the Most High, come out of her my people. The first one to be called out was Abram in Genesis 12 verse 1 and the final call to come out of Babylon comes to us in Revelation 18 verse 4. You my brother and sister, you are in this captivity too, this Babylonian captivity, not by choice, but because Yahuwah has determined it to be so. And he is calling you and me to come out of her, for he is turning back our captivity. Ever since the Reformation began at the beginning of the 16th century, there have been steps taken to come out of her. This book, which you now read is part of the final call and part of the restoration of all matters. Acts 3, verse 21. We do not profess that further light will not come, for indeed our Savior will complete that which he has now started. He will thoroughly purge his threshing floor. He will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Matthew 3, verse 12, KJV. This book serves to unveil the great apostasy. As Bible translators like to call it as it is described in 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3 through 12. It reveals to us the mystery of lawlessness of 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7 RAV 
It reveals to us mystery Babylon of Revelation 17 verse 5 of which much is said in the final 11 chapters of the book of Revelation. It unmasks the abomination of desolation which our Messiah said in Matthew 24, 15 and Daniel as well in Daniel 9, verse 27, Daniel 11, verse 31, Daniel 12, verse 11 will be found to be set up in a set-apart place. And fulfillment of Messiah's promise in Luke 8, 17 it unseals the important things. That were revealed to Daniel in visions and dreams. Daniel was commanded in Daniel 12.4. But you Daniel shut up the words and sealed the book. Until the time of the end. This command to Daniel was repeated to him in Daniel 12, 9. This sealing of the book was only up to the end time, until the time of the end. Many shall push forth and knowledge shall increase. Daniel 12, verse 4, Hebrew text. The German, Dutch, and African translations have preferred the figurative meaning of the Hebrew shut, push forth, namely, do research, and it fits in perfectly with the context of this verse. The revelation of the abomination of desolation, Daniel 9, verse 27, Daniel 11, verse 31, and Daniel 12, verse 11, and all the things. What will be in the latter days? Daniel 2, verse 28, Daniel 7, verse 18 and 27, Daniel 8, verse 17 and 19 and 26, Daniel 10, verse 14, Daniel 11, verse 40, Daniel 12, verses 1 through 3 are described for us in Daniel chapters 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. These visions, revelation, were so shocking that Daniel said, I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts. And my face turned pale, but I kept the matter to myself. Daniel 7, verse 28, NIV. In Daniel 7, verse 15, he said, My mind disturbed me. NIV. In Daniel 8, verse 27, he said, He fainted and was sick for days. In Daniel 10, verse 8 and 16 through 17, Daniel further recorded the sickening effect these revelations had upon him. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale and I was helpless. I am overcome with anguish. I am helpless. My strength is gone and I can hardly breathe. NIV. That is exactly how we felt too. When the abomination of desolation, the great apostasy, the mystery of lawlessness, and mystery of Babylon were unveiled to us. The spirit of truth was indeed guiding us into all truth, John 16, verse 13, convicting us of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment, John 16, verse 8. The spirit was truly declaring to us our transgression and our sin, Micah 3, verse 8. Our Elohim was verily fulfilling his promise of Ezekiel 36, verse 27. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. The fire of the baptism of the Spirit does indeed burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Matthew 3, verse 12. All the revelation in this book were given to us as we were led by the Spirit, doing diligent research in the Scriptures, as well as in reliable sources of scholars of Scripture, of religious history, or of archaeology. Someone has attempted to criticize us for including non-ecclesiastical historians and archaeologists in our research. However, this criticism can be refuted on the very scriptural example of the Almighty, even speaking through an ass, Numbers 22, verse 28, and even using stones, archaeology, as Messiah has predicted in Luke 19, verse 40. It is well known that the church from the 4th century onwards had accepted many pagan festival images, idols, names, etc. into the church with the apology that these things of idolatry have been sanctified. Therefore, much of the frank idolatrous origin of these things became suppressed, ignored, or explained away. 
However, honest historians and archaeologists recorded these facts for us, but they were unbiased and merely related their findings. Thus, the very stones of archaeology and history also cry out. The study of the names of pagan idols is greatly impeded by the fact that the pagans diversified the names of their deities and also disguised their names and even tried to keep them secret in order to avoid their opponents getting hold of the name of their idol. Further, Hislop tells us in the two Babylons, page 122, that the pagans were in the habit of worshiping the same god under different names. And even worse, with the secretism that prevailed since the time of Alexander the Great, the deities of the various nations became identified with one another. But in our research, the Spirit of Truth was blessing us by guiding us and leading us, leading us out of this confusion. Another important point needs to be mentioned. The Sun deity had, and still has, many names. The fact soon becomes very obvious to anyone who starts reading on the subject. Some decades after the merger of fusion of sun worship with the Messianic belief had become a reality, Macrobius wrote, All gods are only different powers of the sun, quoted by James Bunwick, Egyptian Belief in Modern Thought, page 276. The details of this assimilation are fully discussed in the text of this book. You now read. By now the reader would have noticed that we do not accept the Greek name or words, Isus, Jesus, and Christos, Christ, and might ask, but don't you accept the Greek language as being the original inspired language of the New Testament? Our reply to that is as follows. We firmly believe and accept the entire message contained in the Greek text of the Messianic Scriptures New Testament since it is the only complete reliable record we presently have of the time Messiah walked this earth and the period immediately following it, the time of the apostles. We firmly believe that Messianic scriptures were inspired in Hebrew, at least most of them, but these documents no longer exist. The Greek text can only be a translation of the original Hebrew Messianic scriptures. Many serious scholars have especially lately taken a stand against the popular belief that the New Testament was inspired in the Greek language. Our firm stand against this popular belief is based on the following. In Exodus 23 verse 13, Yahuwah explicitly prohibits his people from uttering the names of other deities or the mighty ones. This is affirmed in no uncertain way in Joshua 23 verse 7 and in Psalm 16 verse 4. The set-apart spirit. The spirit of truth did inspire all scripture, as we all believe. However, when we come to the ordinary language of the Greek text of the Greek Messianic scriptures, we find that the Greek language is riddled with the names of Greek deities used as ordinary Greek nouns or words. Here follows a list of these nouns and words from which Greek deities derive their names, or more likely the other way around. We have given the English meaning in brackets for those who do not know Greek or do not have access to the Greek text. Er is air, adikos, unrighteous, anatole, east, rising, angelos, angel, messenger, chorus, grace, favor, acceptable, pleasure, thanks, gift, joy, benefit, chronos, years old, time, season, space, while, dyke, judgment, punish, vengeance. Gear, soil, earth, country, land, world, hades, grave, hell, Iodus, Iodus, Jew, Nike, victory, overcoming, nomos, law, principle, chronos, heaven, air, sky, parthenos, virgin, maiden, pitho, agree, believe, persuade, obey, trust, yield, phobos, fear, alarm, fright, be afraid. Sight, soup, soul, mind, life, you, per, fiery, fire, soda, savior, Taurus, bull, ark, zealous, zeal, jealousy, envy, as well as many personal names of people and places. The only language in the world that was protected by Yahuwah from incorporating the names of deities into its language was Hebrew, Exodus 23, verse 13. That it 
why it is called Lashon HaKodesh, the set-apart tongue by the Hebrews. The set-apart spirit inspiring all scripture would most certainly not have transgressed the law of Yahuwah by inspiring the messianic scriptures in a language riddled with the names of Greek deities and freely using the names of these deities in the text. No way. This book will greatly help the seek of truth to return to the true worship. The gift of discerning of spirits must be prayed for in order to discern between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. 1 John 4 verse 6 To discern between the spirit of Yahuwah and the spirit that now works and the sons of disobedience. Ephesians 2 2 Not many accept all scripture and therefore do not accept some vital scriptures which we bring to the notice of the reader of this book. For many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew 22, verse 14. For the gate is small, and the way is narrow that leads to life, and few are those who find it. Matthew 7, verse 14, N-A-S-B. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. Isaiah 24, verse 6. Who are the few that are chosen? Just as he chose us in him, Messiah, before the foundation of the world, that we should be set apart, holy and without blame, before him in love. Ephesians 1, verse 4, capital supplied. Read also Second Thessalonians 2, verse 13, 1 Peter 1, verse 2, and 14 through 16. We are chosen by him to be set apart, holy, for he is set apart, holy. Many are called, but few respond to his requirement, namely his demand for separateness or apartness, holiness. Therefore the few are described in Revelation 17 verse 14 as called, chosen, and faithful. How can I know that I am being chosen? Simply by responding to his call to be set apart from the sins of the world. Take heed without separateness or apartness, no one will see him. Hebrews 12, verse 14. Only those who accept his only begotten Son as Savior. And then as their only teacher, Matthew 23, verse 8 and 10. And only leader, shepherd, and overseer. 1 Peter 2, verse 25. Will endure to the end on the narrow way. They are those who truly come into the binding relationship with Yahuwah. Even a new covenant of which the law of Yahuwah is still the contents. Hebrews 8, verse 10 and 10, verse 16. Only they will escape the end time plagues and final destruction that is to come upon Mr. Babylon. By this way, South Africa made itself most hated in the eyes of all the world with its inhuman oppressive system of apartheid based on skin color, which is totally unscriptural. In fact, it is frank transgression of the second great commandment. Love your neighbor, fellow man, as yourself. It is rather ironic that from this same country should come forth a call to be set apart instead of holy, namely the apartness which is spiritual and scriptural to be set apart from sin, to obey the voice of Yahuwah, to be set apart from sin is mandatory for the messianic believer. It is an essential requisite in the true worship. Hebrews 12 verse 14, Ephesians 1 verse 4, Romans 6 verses 19 through 22, 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16, 1 Peter 2, verse 9, amongst others. This book is meant for those who, out of thankfulness for the great redemptive love shown on Golgotha, can but only respond by loving your, our Elohim with all their hearts, all their minds, and all their souls. They are those who strive to read and obey every scripture command, for they delight in doing so. They are those who live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Yahuwah, Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, and Matthew 4, 4. They are those who no longer read and obey the word in a pick-as-you-please way or in a la carte fashion. In one sense, the scripture is the story of the struggle between true worship and false or apostate or mixed worship. The message of the three messengers in Revelation 14, 6 through 12 is a call for returning to back to Yahuwah. A restoration, a call for sanity. This book details that call for sanity. It appeals to those who have come to know their Savior personally. Those who, like us, serve Yahuwah with gladness. Who rejoice in Yahuwah always. 
when we have accepted Yahushua as our Savior. He lives in us, in our hearts. He and his father John, 14, verse 23, working in us both to will and to work on behalf of his good pleasure. Philippians 2, verse 13, he is the one who reconciles us with his father. Romans 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 18. 1 Peter 3, verse 18. He is the one who motivates us to do the will of his Father, to bring us to the place where we can truly say, I delight to do your will, O my Elohim, and your law is within my heart. Psalm 40, verse 8. Strictly in accordance with Scripture, this book also calls believers to worship the Father, not only in spirit, but in truth also john 4 verse 23 to 24 trust and obey for there is no other way should be the song song from our lips and also from our hearts this book is offered so that the truth may set us free our savior has paid the price for us on the cruel tree on golgotha not only to save us but also to redeem us from all lawlessness titus 2 verse 14 greek text the purpose of this work is to share truth with others personal financial gain is not our intent. If you care to order books for study groups or to share with others, we are pleased to invite your participation. Any contribution received will be used for the printing of further copies and distribution. We are greatly indebted to our Messiah who said, Without me you can do nothing. John 15 verse 5. We are also greatly indebted to every brother and sister who has supported the preparation and publication of this book by their ties, by helping prepare the manuscript, and above all, their prayers.